Welcome back, everybody, to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Today we're going to be starting the the uh, third and final trial of case five. This is the defendant lobby, all right, but there's no defendant. I've been trying to reach Lana all morning. Where could she be? And where's Ema, for that matter? It almost seems as if something's been happening behind the scenes. Edgeworth! Knowing you, you've already figured it out. The owner of the 777-7777 ID number is. Well, I have a pretty strong hunch. Looks like I'm not the only one who's figured it out. You know, the only reason this trial didn't reach a verdict yesterday is because there was still room for doubt on this ID record. If that number does belong to whom you suspect, then no doubt will remain. After all, he hasn't been officially charged with anything. True, not yet. In any event, once all doubt has been removed from that list, I can call for a ruling on the defendant. Five minutes after the trial starts, Lana will be found guilty. But she didn't do it! I figured you'd say as much. That's why I came here, to hear what you have to say. This is the first time he's ever done something like this. Lana's hiding something, and the only way we'll ever know the truth is to draw it out of her. The truth? Everything goes back to the SL9 incident. Don't be stupid. Today is the last day of the trial. We don't have time to reminisce about the past. That depends on you. If she's found guilty, you'll lose your only chance to find out what really happened. I'll think about it. See you in court, right? This is it. If I'm ever gonna find out what Chief Gant has on her, it's now. So let's get started with this freaking trial already. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Skye. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Normally this is when the prosecution puts forth its opening statement. But before that, the police chief has a proposal to make. Chief Gant. Morning, folks! How's everyone doing? Hey, Archie, been back in the pool yet? No, I've been drowning enough as it is in my work. Oh, that's a good one! Don't think I can top that. If you don't mind me asking, Chief, Exactly what is this proposal of yours? Everything gets quiet. Lana, that is to say, the defendant, has asked me if she could speak directly to the court. She wants to do what? Having heard what she intends to say, I feel she should be granted her request. In the end, it should save everyone a lot of time and trouble. What's this all about, Defendant? I'd just like to make one simple request, and I'll be finished. Well then, what's your request? Your Honor, I'd like you to put an immediate end to this trial. Huh? I confess to all charges against me. On February 21 of this year, I murdered Detective Bruce Goodman in the underground parking lot of the prosecutor's office. No, Lana! Can't. Your Honor, the defendant's claim does not change the defense's plea. In that case, Mr. Wright, I no longer require your services. But Lana... Your Honor, I hereby forfeit my right to an attorney. The prosecution may lack direct evidence against me, but it has sufficiently proven its case through testimony and circumstantial evidence. I would like you to render your verdict now, if you please. Hmm. Well, the defendant certainly has the right to self-representation. Her request is legally valid, although this is an unprecedented situation. Indeed, it appears there's no further need to continue this trial, even if Mr. Wright may feel otherwise. This can't be happening! 
It appears the time for the verdict has arrived. This court finds the defendant... Objection! Edgeworth objects? One moment, Your Honor. Mr. Edgeworth, the prosecution has not yet proven the defendant guilty beyond reasonable doubt. Any ruling at this stage would certainly be premature. Come now, Worthy. I understand this is a difficult time for you, but why don't you just be a good little boy and keep your mouth shut, hmm? I don't think I care for your tone, Chief Gant. What? Creating another fabrication to cover up your past mistakes. Sorry, but I'm no longer the naive little boy you would have me be. With this sudden confession from the defendant, it's obvious to me some kind of deal was struck behind the scenes. Some kind of deal, hmm? Not everyone operates as you do, Worthy. I thought so. Your Honor, the prosecution would like to change its first witness. Oh? To whom? As its first witness, the prosecution would like to call Miss Ema Skye. I request the court hears her testimony. Mr. Edgeworth, I am exercising my right to self-representation. I don't think we need to continue. I don't care what you think, Miss Skye. The exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, no matter how tragic the truth may be, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes from it. Very well. The court shall grant the prosecution's request. That's okay with you, right, Chief Gant? Worthy. You'll live to regret this. Mark my words. Miss Ema Sky, please take the stand. Looks like Edgeworth has decided to take the, ho the horse by the reins. Now then, witness, please state your name and occupation. Um, my name is Ema. Ema Sky. My occupation? I'm Lana's little sister, and I want to be a scientific investigator. Two years ago, you encountered the serial killer Joe Dark of the Joe Dark Killings. Is this correct? Yes. I'm trying my hardest to forget about that, though. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to recall those events one more time. Mr. Edgeworth, please remember this trial concerns the murder of Detective Goodman. Is an incident that was resolved two years ago really all that relevant? Yes, it most certainly is. Well, okay then. The judge has a Wikipedian opinion, of course. He sure gave in fast. Now, please testify about what happened to you two years ago. The trip to yesteryear has finally begun. It's bound to lead to the truth behind this trial. Okay, so almost nine minutes in, we're finally getting to the fucking testimony here. I was waiting in my sister's office that day. A man came running in and took me hostage. Neil Marshall rescued me, but I'll never forget what I saw that instant. The man raised up his knife and, and stabbed Mr. Marshall in the chest. It's a good thing you weren't harmed. I passed out. I don't remember much. That's understandable. However, please tell me, Mr. Edgeworth, what does this testimony have to do with Detective Goodman's murder? That will soon become apparent, Your Honor. You've got to admire him for his courage, considering he has no evidence. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. Yep. Hold it! What was the prosecutor doing there? That day, there were two people present during Dark's questioning. Detective Damon Gant and Prosecutor Neil Marshall. Gant was there too? Neil Marshall had just received the King of Prosecutors Award. Young and dedicated, he went straight to the questioning room after the ceremony. 
I assume that would also be why he was the first to run after Dark. When Dark grabbed me, I... I thought I was as good as dead. And that's when Prosecutor Marshall came running in. I... I don't clearly remember what happened then, but... Hmm. Hold it! Can you tell us about that? Mr. Marshall jumped on Dark. Just then, the lights went out. The lights? It was just about this time of year. There was a terrible storm going on, and lightning struck nearby. So the electricity went out. Wait a minute. If it was pitch dark in that room, you shouldn't have been able to see anything, right? Right, but just then lightning flashed again outside. That sudden flash left an unforgettable image of the scene in my mind. I see. I told the detective about what I saw then. The detective? Yes, Detective Goodman. He was in charge of the case. Detective Bruce Goodman, the victim. Let's hear some more. So you spoke with Detective Goodman about this two years ago. Yes, that's what's so scary about this trial. And you told Detective Goodman about what you saw? Yes, but at the time, the words just wouldn't come out. That's why I drew a picture. A picture? Yes, I think she mentioned that before. Well, Mr. Wright, have you heard enough? Let's ask about the picture. This picture the witness drew, I believe it has a very important meaning. Objection! But the list of evidence I was given two years ago didn't contain a picture. Witness, would you mind if we added this statement to your testimony? Y yes Your Honor. I drew a picture of that scene once, but it seems to have been lost. Think so, huh? Well, I got something here that actually might surprise you. Huh? In fact, I'm going to uh, actually remind everybody what that is. See that? And with that in mind, OBJECTION! Mr. Edgeworth. This little girl put all her heart into drawing that picture. And yet you still insist on denying its existence? Hey, I'm not the bad guy. All I'm saying is that as the prosecutor for that case, I wasn't handed such a picture. That may well be. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Behold! This is... the, the evidence list for the SL9 incident? Please turn it over, Your Honor. Turn it over? Turn it... Ah! What's this? Yes, what is that? Hey, that's it! That's the picture I drew! Indeed. Two men appear to be wrestling here. What's the meaning of this? What are you doing with that list? Me? Only the prosecutor in charge should have access to that list. Huh? These lists, they're... They're different from each other. What? It would appear, Mr. Edgeworth, that the evidence list you were handed two years ago was incomplete. These two lists fit together to form one. You can see the marks here where they were torn apart from each other. So you see, Mr. Edgeworth, it's quite obvious what happened. Two years ago, only half of the evidence of the case ever reached you. What? What?